teaching you about how to use a piece of equipment again. We're going to look at the chunks stackers. So this goes hand in hand with the last program that I've done, which was the horse race. And here's the second activity that you can use with the chunk stackers. This is from Smart Kids again. You can get this online. Uh, fantastic resources these. Now, here's my kit. This being Gold Coast. We love our Gold Coast here. And one of our most fantastic icon buildings is the Q1. So I call this the Q1 game. And what we're going to do is build towers. And we're going to build and stack and build and stack and build and stack. And, and I love this because children, they compete with you. When you're the therapist, they like to sort of compete and play a game. And, and they get lost in the game while we're getting lost in whether they're doing the job right and they're getting the skills. So at the end of the day, we achieve our goals, which is important. And okay, so how this game goes, just simply what we do is you're not allowed to look, you can put this into a bag and you put your hand in and you pull out a tile. You pop it down and what we're doing is building the structure of the Q1, okay? Yes, building the structure of the Q1. So we pull out two to get started and this might be mine here, I'll turn it so it's facing you so you can read, okay? Randomly pulling it out of a bag, I think it's good having it in a pillowcase or a bag and then it's a guess. Okay, what I like is by randomly pulling it out, we're going to getting, we're going to probably build some non-words as well. We want to build non-words. Non-words, uh, real words are great as well, but some of these real words, the children know. They've burnt them into their visual memory and they're, they're, um, they've become locked in files with shapes and so on that are stored as images. So that make, that's great because they're pulling those words up fast. But at the end of the day, part of one, our goal is actually to develop their sound processing or their stringing the, the sounds together. So that means that by blocking their semantic center or their, their, their visual library is going to make them work better with their sound processor or their phonological processing skills. See, I often will see uh, in therapy a really interesting phenomenon which I, I really want to discuss with you. What um, what I often will see is I might assess a child, say for example at a stage of their, their development with literacy and they might come in to me and they're in grade one and they're, they're showing problems with their impairments with speech and that's carrying on in also into their reading and their spelling skills so that's demonstrating say for example a phonological uh, a dyslexia or reading problem or a phonological sound means phonological uh, dysgraphia which is a spelling problem and what I find really fascinating is I'll assess these children back in grade one and then we'll start to do some work and we'll start working on the sound processor and they're doing quite well in therapy then um, those children for some reason they discontinue therapy they, they're unable to attend private therapy something happens they have therapy or oh, you know they just stop therapy but What's really interesting is some of those children, so over a series of years, I've been able to keep look, look at these records and see what happens. And these ch children might then come back, and they might come back in grade four or grade five. And they've had a big gap, and then their parents are saying, oh, they're so far behind, you know, we're back into so having some therapy. And when I assess their sound processing system, and I assess the capability of their brain to do these skills, they may have actually progressed forward at learning more words. So in the classroom, they've done their spelling list, they've got their sight words, they've been going forward, going forward, going forward. But what's really interesting is when I actually go and I assess their sound processor, sometimes it's back at grade one, which is interesting. So what I'm hypothesizing is that what's going to happen is this sound processor is being blinded and taken over like by this visual processing system right at the back here this 
photographic brain is so big and is so greedy that it actually takes over the brain's function because the child finds it easier to work that way than it is to slow down and process the, all this linear chain and bringing it all together. So what's, what I find fascinating is these children almost go into like this cyber sleep with their sound processing. They go into what I call to the kids like sleeping beauty. They go for these three years and it does not move. But it is starting to show these problems and changes and um, failure to change is coming out in their writing, it's coming out of their spelling and people go, what's going on? There's still something happening. So this is very, very interesting. And then to follow this up, what would happen in therapy is they start getting into doing their non-words and would start building their chunking skills again and reading their two syllable and then three and then four syllable non-word chaining and then all of a sudden they're going and they're improving. So what's this saying? That it's saying to me that doing the non-words is actually blinding the semantic center. It's holding it back and saying, you can't work. I'm going to force the sound processor to wake up and start getting these cogs going and getting this processing happening. It's actually blinding this and giving this skill a chance to work. How did we discover this as speech pathologists? Well, the, 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 the speech pathologists who then took on jobs in rehabilitation and working with brain injury, this is something that we do regularly. We work with these different modules in the brain and we block these different modules to actually strengthen this. So this is coming from that field of our sport, in our, that field of our technology where we've learned to do this. So this is why this makes such a big difference working with non-words. So if you've always questioned why teach a child a non-word, it's not a real word, make no mistake, it's very powerful therapy to progress children very fast with a skill that never never actually um, moved through. So here's a great opportunity working with the Q1 game to work with those non-words. I like to drill them as well to get them fast, but this is a nice way of making a game that's quite fun. So what, they, what you do then is you randomly select you know, from inside your pillow sack or just here, we're just doing today. And then you plonk it on top and read the word ch eed. Mm, that's a non-word, so that person doesn't get a stone. Ch og, non-word. Ch ing, ching, not really. How about this one? Sul ing, yes. That's a real word. That's the point. Okay, now progressively each player is going to be having a turn and they're going to be building a higher and a higher and a higher and a higher and higher tower and get collecting their little boulders around the tower because we're building Q1s, we're building these boulders. This is what I do in the game until usually something happens and the tower goes over. So, and that's all the excitement at the end for the child when you're playing. But here's a really great idea just to spice it up and make learning fun for the child because they get really lost in the strategy. They get lost in trying to sort of predict the, a, a real word so they can get a boulder. All right, and, and at the end of the day, what we're doing is getting a chance to get them to practice their phonetic reading um, or their sound reading to line these sounds up onto their their chain, this this linear platform, which I like to call the the um, you know Aldi shopping shopping conveyor belt because we want to have a really long one, not a little tiny Woolworths or Coles one. We want to get a really really long one, and that's what we're doing is developing not only their skills to retrieve the sounds, which was being done from the cards. But also the ability to blend those sounds whilst they're being held on that platform. Okay, cool. And then the last stage was actually determining whether it is a real or a non-real word. So that's actually entering into the semantic center to actually see if those words, uh, the child is actually comprehending that those words and what those words mean. Okay, so I hope you've got some information from that game, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. It's what you do, what you do, it's when you put your tongue It's a shape of your lips, let's make it fun Funny cold stars
is what you do with your teeth. It's where you put your tongue. It's the shape of your lips. Let's make it fun. Funny, false stars.